Hello McWarriors, how's it going? And welcome to another episode of Rogue Tech. Guys, we have an urban lord to build and I want to get that 70 ton heavy mech on the board. So we're going to wait for two days and we're going to start the refit because I'm super excited to see what we can squeeze out of the thing. So before we get into it, um, one, one very quick thing because um, I need, yeah, I need to check the chronos. The thing actually got its um, defensive gyro destroyed. No, just crit. Okay, cool. So we can still maintain that. That was the important thing here. That was the important factor that I wanted to check real quick. But okay, everything is awesome here. Now, on top of it, um, I want to drop the Swordsman because that thing brings a good amount of stuff that we don't need anymore in this mech. I don't think that we ever use that thing again. So we're going to bring it down to the storage, which uh, instantly takes all of the parts away from him and puts it into storage as well. And now we can take our Urban Lord and bring the stuff that was originally on the other mech in here so cool thing it is that it has a radical double heatsink kit already and uh, it doesn't have any engine upgrades or so but what i want to do is the following it's gonna be so weird so uh engine 300 for a bit of mobility and then we're gonna take the quick cell engine yes the quick cell engine why because uh, first of all we get negative walking distance but i don't care we have more visibility more sensor signatures so enemies are most likely to hit the urban mech uh, lord but we also get negative 40 percent heat generated that's so so crazy also it takes us less money and time to rebuild it and refill it so that's really cool let's see where we can go with that all right so this is not not completely decided yet we have a bunch of energy hard points here actually only two. Oh, interesting but there's one ballistic it could be a rock build later uh first of all max armor that's the thing that we need and uh, we have a fusion core we have the engine upgrade we have a kit already so this is fine now we got to think about what we want to put in the mech in terms of weapon systems. Sadly, I have no ammo for the rock for the 20 and for the 10, but I have enough ammo for an Ultra 5. So let's take that, put it in here. We have two safe tons, so we can even put it on the arm, doesn't matter really. And that's fine. So we have a ballistic weapon. But there's also one more thing. And that one more thing is a heavy, improved, large laser. With that, we have good range and we have good pinpoint. That's 80 damage pinpoint that's coming out of the thing. And I love it. And since, honestly, since we are not using, uh, utilizing lower arms here, there's no real need to put it on the arm. I'd rather put it into the side torso where it's a bit better protected. Let's go with that. On top of it, we also have two LRM-15 clan that we can add on the mech. Um, yeah, heat management is still fine. <laughs> this is so crazy. <laughs> I like it. I really do like it. But now we are over tonnage. Oh no, what are, are we doing about it? Question mark. We're going to put composite in this mech. And we're going to put ferrofibers on this mech. And I think then we are good to go. So this mech is now a, a very good mid-ranger that can pump out a good chunk of damage. Now, the one thing that I want to quickly raise here, the one question that I want to raise. Do we need composite or can we just go for clan endosteel? I think we can. We don't need that many more heat sinks. We need ammo for the LRMs, sure. But I think this is a, a very straightforward build that can just run on its own here. Thing is, we are not optimal in heat management yet. We are down by three, which is actually not that big of a deal. Uh, and we have an emergency coolant system. That means whenever we are getting above 120% heat, then we dissipate 25 heat per turn. That is massive on a mech like that, that has basically not that much heat buildup because of the uh, quick cell engine. So, I'm thinking, we're gonna be fine with that, and now we're gonna put some support systems into the mech, okay? Something like, uh, no, we have no ECM. <laughs> Crap. We're gonna put the defensive gyro on the mech because it makes sense. I'm gonna also put, I don't know, do we need the cooling jacket? It's another 10% another negative heat, but it weighs a little bit of tonnage. With the cooling jacket, oh, we're gonna be fine now. We're gonna be ultra fine. I mean, why not? We need ammo for our LRMs. That's what I was going for here. We're gonna put one double bin in there. And we're gonna put one bin of SIM against flyers? Okay. You know what? That's what we do. That is what we do here, guys. And that is basically the build. Um, we need to think about targeting gear, of course. But I also want to drop something like, hmm, let me think. I want to drop a bit of front armor so that we and, and back armor so that we have another one ton free. 
Like a full ton is what I need here. So uh, 100, 185 on the front and 94 on the back should be okay. Um, and with the last ton, we can think about either more ammo or an ECM as soon as that is free. But we don't have any right now, which is a bit bad. Just a bit. I could drop the engine core to 280 possibly. Oh, I'm thinking. Um, maybe that's a good idea, actually. Um, yeah, yeah, that is a good idea. You know what a good idea is? I'm gonna put a 280 core in there. And with that, we should be able to bring the mechanical jump threads from the Stalker into this mech, so it can actually acquire direct line of sight by jumping on the high ground. Because that thing is heavily dependent on it. It has two LRM-15s, sure. But we also want to bring the Ultra Autocannon 5 and the Heavy Large Laser, like, always on point. So... Here's the thing. Since I don't know that's possible yet... Fusion Core? Remove it! Yeah, yeah, it's fine. We're gonna start building this. It's 18 days anyway. And for the time being, since we will start to build here, we are not putting the fusion core in there yet. Since I need to know if it's if it's possible to take the stuff out of the stalker, the stalker is then gonna get an engine upgrade uh, instead of the um, of the jump jets. So it's gonna be a little bit faster on its own. It can always shoot indirectly and so on. So there's a bit of mixing and matching. However, we started the build. It takes 18 days, and while we are waiting for this build, we will. Certainly play some more missions, so let's go ahead and do that. Everybody's ready? Yeah, yeah, it's fine. You know what? We're gonna try to find some more stuff, and maybe we find even better stuff later for the Urban Lord when we are coming out of the missions. So here we go, guys. Next mission is gonna be a battle in a Martian environment. Three and a half skull, we are playing against the government, and we're gonna take everything we can. And hopefully now we can play with our own mechs again. Ah, we have a VIP. All right, so... The Crow Brothers are coming down again. And I think Munin is a, one of the pilots, right? I wanted to train Munin for a missile specialist. Sure. You're gonna go on the missile mech. And then they, I think it was Morphium or Moloch. I think it was Moloch here, right? On the other Stone Crow. Sure. Let's go with that. And by the way, he already has a good chunk of affinity here. So he's down to 10. He's a veteran. Do we get anything on 10? No. At 20 we get something. We get... Defense and melee defense. All right, not bad. Rest of the people are fine. Sure, 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 sure. We have too much tonnage, though. Mm. Now, what are we doing with that? I think I'm gonna drop one of the crows. Now, we can bring a yellow jacket, right? Yeah, I think we can. So, Yellow Jacket, give me a vehicle pilot. It's gonna be Tinker. And now we are at 400 tons, and that's what we can do. So, perfect. Tinker is the only one being able to um, run vehicles right now. It's kind of funky. Uh, on top of, you know, everybody that we have in here, but uh, she's the last spare pilot that we have. And I'm honestly actually quite okay having someone training actively on the battlefield. Um, that is able to run some vehicles because our our vehicle garage is gonna is gonna fill up at some point. But right now, I'm not really interested in the low tier ones that we got so far. Um, there were a bunch of parts like like a bandit and ferrets, and I mean there was a manticore. Uh, there is a point four manticore, but also it's just a very standard vanilla tank that's not doing so much. I'm here for the crazy stuff, so um, I'm looking for yeah. I mean the yellow jacket is good. I'm looking for Ifrit Strikecrafts. I'm looking for um, the other ones. Oh, what was the name? There are some VTOLs. Oh, you know it, right? Leave a comment down below if you know what I mean. The one... The one that has double AMS and flares and, 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 and rotary autocannons and stuff like that. I want those things. I got the name of them. Haven't played in a while, I guess. <laughs> All right. So... First mission of the day. Let's see. Man, I'm really looking forward to that Urban Lord. Uh, for that, we need to upgrade our drop tonnage, though. And we need to think about how to get there, how to push that. I do believe it's... We need to drive upgrade on the Argo. And... I also think... No, wait. We just need to drive upgrade and then we can upgrade the tonnage. Pretty much. But yeah, we need to get there as quickly as possible now. I think this is uh, this is how we're gonna get stronger, by just being able to drop bigger mechs and more mechs. And, I mean, really think about it. The Swordsman was a spare mech anyway, and now we have, instead of the Swordsman, we have that Urban Lord. So, which mech do we drop at some point? I, I don't know. 
Really. I don't want to drop anybody. Alright, time to evac. Good, good, good. Griffin must survive. Uh, wait a second. We can drop here in the back? We can just evac here. <laughs> okay, so the movement is a bit janky right now. Ooh, that's rough. Cannot really place my things. Can place everybody down there. Sure, why not? Super hot drop, we're gonna stack the mags on top of each other. I wanna be behind the enemies. Ready Let's see. Action, so, here we are. We got some tanks, as I was talking about. Um, and since we are in first round, we're gonna just wait for everybody okay. to make their move. Here we go. You know, the funny thing here is that it seems like there is only one lance of tanks, so it could be a very quick and very efficient mission. And I'm really hoping for it. Okay. He's pilot. Good, good, good. Man, if that's really the case, if I, I, would, I would be so happy. I would be so happy to see a very quick mission, you know, spending some time, getting some value, uh, not getting too much return fire, being quick with the mission so we can play two today, and then uh, get the Urban Lord, and then bring the Urban Lord to the battlefield already. That would be so cool. All right, I'll sit here. I got plenty to do. So, not turn 14. Like I'm running low on time. One thing real quick. Um, yeah, okay. So the sound cut out for a second because I was switching tabs. I needed to check something. Good. Hey there. Let, let's go. Let's do it. Let's go for standard ammo. I can actually get line of sight. Sure, let's take Roger. it then. We have four percent, which is nothing. But there's nine, nine, nine. What do you need? Not too bad. Here comes the Griffin. Understood. I mean, the VIP Back. must survive. That's important here. Firing. But it can also deal damage. Waiting for and honestly, order. that's just a scorpion, so I'm not really that afraid of him. I was Stormcrow with the SRMs. Oh, I know what we're gonna be doing. We have the tandem ammo. We're not dropping it yet because we have no hit chance first round. But later on, it's gonna be beautiful. Ah, uh, Uziel? Oh yeah, oh, ah, high ground. No, we're gonna push forward for the next round. Okay. Ready for orders. The other Stormcrow is gonna go on the flank. No shooting, just running. Is there gonna be a drop coming down? Receiving you. I really don't know. But okay. So moving. We have no hit chance on anything, so I'm not gonna use my Thunderbolts yet. It's not gonna happen. I wanna brace. There, there we go. Waiting for orders. Uh yellow jacket, however. Hmm. Let's go. 21%, I will take that shot. Aye, aye. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Fine. Oh, God, I was sleeping. What do you want? Yeah, and then we have an arrow carrier, and we're gonna shoot directly. That could be a kill. Ah, oh, it's not quite it though. That's a good first round. I broke him like my hip. So, next round. Yes, Commander. Ah, oh, this is exactly what I wanted. So we move over here. We have that hovercraft with a 40% hit chance, and if we go tandem, we're gonna probably just kill that thing. And here we go. Direct damage to internals, just bypassing everything. Nice. God, I was sleeping. All right, I would say we're gonna drop another arrow. No, just being quick, just alpha striking everything. It's an awfully nice Buick you have. Pity if anything should happen to it. <laughs> this guy, man. This guy. Myrmidon coming through. Oh, nice. It took... A Wait. The headset was targeted. In the back, somehow. Alright. Uziel is gonna counterattack him. We probably have a pretty good hit chance. We might be able to kill that thing in one go. Might. Not quite, though, but we have enough to follow up. Here comes the carrier. Alright. 21% is not the best hit chance. Maybe I should have sensor locked him. But we didn't need to. Nice. We got some stray shots, uh, I think, against the Stormcrow here. So there is a little bit of repair cost, but I'm okay with that. Next up is the Kronos. Sure, let's move the Kronos in. We're gonna shoot him, instead of punching him. 
Wow, complete miss. I mean, fine. Maybe I should have waited for him to come close, but you know, it's a Pegasus, it only has one energy. It's in a radiation field with stealth on, so yeah, there is a lot of mischance on this guy. Also, it's a quite fast enemy. And that one energy is still a PPC. Good to know. Yeah? Yeah? Yeah, let's go. Let's shoot him. Attacking from position. Because that is a thing that we can do. Receiving you. Why is the yellow jacket so slow? Because of the environment, huh? Right? Is that it? I think it is. I think we don't we don't really have enough like air in this here. I don't know. Reporting negative damage. Need something, Chief? All right. On the move. What we definitely need is mines up there, and what we definitely need is sensor lock. Oh yeah, that's gonna hurt him. And there's another blip, so it was not as easy as I thought it would be. Damn it. Still no hit chance. You know what, we're gonna wait it out now. We really have to think about our moves at this point. Um, however... Yeah. Let's get him. Um, wait, the pirate SRM. Got him. All primary targets have been destroyed. So technically, we could just evac at that point. Hmm. Aye, aye. We're pretty close. But we could also just move in and cool down. Let's go. I mean, I am here for the salvage. Oh, God, I was sleeping. What do you want? <laughs> oh, man. We have we... no movement because of the heat that we have on the mech. Waiting for orders. Skyros. Yeah, sure, move in. Confirmed. It's a bit of a problem because they are so much on the high ground there. Ready for order. But let's see what we can do. Yep. Uh, sure. You know what? You can jump and brace. What's up, boss? Uh, yellow jacket. Still not really able to go anywhere. <laughs> and oh, oh, that's interesting. I'm gonna enable hot seat now so we can sprint for I would say two turns. And we're gonna bypass the mines, we're gonna move around here and try to get into the fight there. Let's do it! Come on, give me something good! Give me something that's worth salvaging. Let's hit him hard. Uh, oh, there we go! Nidhogg gunship! Nidhogg gunship! That's the thing that I was talking about. Beautiful! And we actually get to see one. Yeah, that's really nice, man. Alright. Still have some tandem shots, but only four. So this time it's LK. Down goes the first helicopter. It's a full VTOL lance. And I want that gunship. I mean, we're gonna probably take some parts of it. We're probably not gonna get... Oh my god. Get it full. But there's also a Serrano gunship. And... A Hawk Moth. With uh, nothing, really. Uh, yeah, we gotta wait for them. We gotta wait for them to make their move, because right now they have spawn protection first round after a hot drop like this. They just move anyway. They are not shooting, so we can just take them apart like that. Standing by. Oh yeah. So, who's the L? I copy. Let's go. Kill the Serrano. That thing just runs a bunch of rockets, though. We need the Nidhogg. That's the big one. Reporting. Enemy vehicle. Alright, mister. Huh. Skyros is so out of the fight. <laughs> However, there's one thing he can possibly do, and that is sensor locking this beautiful Nidhogg gunship. Hyper velocity auto cannon 20, quad missile pod, AMS flare. It's not a good one. Um, but it is parts of it that we can then use to uh, to build something later. Also, I want to see if we can break the flares. Fire! Lining them up, knocking them down just like Bella Woods. All right. All right, all right, all right. I think the flares actually counteracted my arrow to a um, certain extent. Uh, but anyway, we have VIP. Uh, VIP is actually quite good with hit chance here. Look at that, 59%. Now that is a VIP. The sad thing about it is that my punch bot cannot reach the flyers. Firing full complement on enemy. That's it. Ready for orders. Um. So passive. Let me quickly see. Mm. If I turn into active, reduces jamming on allies 
Uh, no, we're gonna keep it at passive, but we will... We'll just move in, and we're gonna shoot our... Our, um, what's it called? Um, shotgun PPC in the sky. That's a thing that we can provide here. Sensors impaired. How's it going? And same thing here. The Thunderbolts will have a big impact. Firing. If they hit. Down goes the beetle. Very Enemy nice. Cool. Next round. Goodbye. Um, sure. You know what? We're gonna turn off hot seat because we don't need it anyway. Move in. Confirmed. Shoot everything. Shoot everything. Worst thing that happens is we overheat. We can do that. Hot seat is off. Everything's fine. We don't, don't get any damage. Same thing here. Just alpha striking all the way through the mission and we're gonna win. That was a three and a half. That was quite easy. Alright. I will take it, guys. I will certainly, certainly take it. So, we can probably get a good amount of stuff out of this. And, um, I mean, VTOLs are worth a little bit. So, we can, if we want, we can just pick the VTOL parts and uh, have fun with it. And sell all the stuff. I do believe I want that gunship, though. So, that will take a lot of my salvage, um, per se. 370,000 sea builds. Beautiful. I like missions like that. Every now and then, it's good to have something like a milk run. So, we have a full bandit hovercraft. It's not a great one, but it's okay. I will take two Nidhogg parts, no doubt. Yeah, 100%. Pegasus. Maybe. Honestly, it's not a bad one. Will give us a bit of money. Two parts of a pirate Myrmidon. Okay. That's two parts. And then one part. <laughs> okay. I think this is worth it. I think this is worth the money. Sprint scout helicopter. Nah, not really. So, let's see. We have a bunch of stuff here. Light Gauss rifle, light ER PPC. I don't like the word light in it. We need bigger stuff. Pirate PPC. No streak. Ooh, two streak sixes. It's 1.2 million sea builds. Not bad. Two beagle probes. I mean, I need an ECM on the Urban Lord. Uh, that would be actually quite good. Bunch of engine cores, fuel cell engine, XL engine. Just for something reliable. That's uh, reliable money, that is. Ferro, heavy ferro, jammer, tracker. Eh, no. Polo, heavy MRM ammo. That's good, but it's only one bin. I'm not gonna take it. I mean, maybe we get it randomly anyway. So I'm really thinking about an XL engine for a money pick. Or I could... Try... Uh, I could take an ECM, just regular ECM, but it's just low tier, it's not doing so much. I think I'm gonna wait for something bigger and better. Or we're gonna take a part of um, the Pegasus. That thing seems interesting. Alright, I'm gonna gamble on the Pegasus. I have no idea what value that, that, um, that vehicle carries, but we'll check it out. Alrighty. So, Serrano gunship, 5 rocket 10, 2 medium lasers. Not too good, no. Hawk Moth. Actually, can we sell it from here? I cannot sell it from here. Okay. Anti air missile rack. Nope. Light ER PPC. Nope. Chem laser. Nope. Emergency coolant system. Has some value. Like, usable value. I will keep that. Yeah, I have an idea. Diffusion core can go. Artemis. Artemis is good. Yeah, I'll keep it as well. I think I don't have it yet. Nope. So, regular heat sinks. Lots of them. Single heat sink cooling. Lots of them. Lots of ferro. Goodbye. Uh, hyper velocity autocannon 20 ammo. Sure. I think ammo is always good to have because it gives you options. So, I'm gonna keep all of the ammo. But right now, I am pretty happy with the outcome here. So... I want to take a look at the uh, the mech bay now, the vehicle bay, and see how much money we can get out of the picks that we got here. I really hope it's close to 200,000 sea bills. If it's the case, then I'm happy with it. Yeah. So let's check it out. And honestly, we also got some random uh, tank parts. So we will probably be able to upgrade the Argo a bit more after we are done with the latest upgrade. But um, right now, I'm, I'm pretty happy that we have enough money for the financial report, technically, and we can think about what we want to do with it. Basically, no repairs, so that's great. And here we go. So, storage. Uh, we have... Let me see. Here's the Pegasus. That's the one that I picked. 
It's 300,000 sea bills. Totally worth it. So as soon as you see the tanks with hover propulsion that have 9 out of 14 hexes, like look at the movement because that determines how big the engine is. And then look at the equipment on top of that because that determines how valuable the, the parts, the inner parts, the equipment is. A light ER PPC and two heavy MRM-10 is quite a good chunk of value. So we will sell that thing instantly for massive money. Nice. On top of it, what else did we get? Uh, this is all mech stuff. Mech stuff, mech stuff. A hawk moth? Probably not worth anything. Yeah. Gonna drop it. Mm, a scorpion. I mean, 60,000 is still okay. Don't get me wrong. But I'm looking for the big money here. Runner, was, 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 was. Okay, fine. Mediums. So, we had uh, an urban tank. I might want to run that urban tank at some point. 2-8 RM15 is pretty good, actually. Um, But we had something like... The Condor. That's worth nothing. Nope. And then there is our Nidhogg that we're certainly gonna keep. Uh, what else? Urban tank. We have a light carrier. What's the light carrier carrying? Two mine dispenser 15, rockets, MRMs, rocket pack. Actually, that's fun. That's a fun, fun thing to have. I'm gonna keep it. Same thing. Uh, Icarus, Cougar, the Myrmidon. One medium cam, one PPC, one SRM. <clears throat> I think I'm gonna get rid of it. Yeah. Oh, and then we have our swordsman. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry for that. I'm getting a bit of a <clears throat> scratchy throat here. Um, we have a bulldog, and that bulldog can be sold for 90,000. But now we're talking about 60 ton tanks, and that thing actually brings some firepower. So we're gonna keep it. Manticore. Same thing. All right. So, guys, um, I'd say we're going to take a look at our options now. We have the Urban Lord ready in 13 days. So, let's let's take a quick look. We're going to put it on top of the order. We're going to wait for the people to come out of fatigue. And here we go. So, six days. That means we can technically play one more mission before the Urban Lord gets ready. And honestly, I want to do that. We have the Agua upgrade coming up soon. So that's gonna be nice. And yeah, we're gonna dive into one more mission here. Let's go with the highest skill that we have. It's capture base though. I don't like capture base. Let's play another battle. It's two and a half. Fine. We're playing against Steiner. And we're gonna try to get some stuff out of this here. So let's get into it. And we can actually bring the other crow. Can we? Yeah, we should be able to. So, Moloch come in here. We have the 400 ton limit, so this is basically as much tonnage as we have right now. We cannot go any higher, so we cannot change anything in the loadout. Unless we... Um, we could drop the Yellow Jacket and the Uziel in favor for the Urban Lord. Or the Yellow Jacket and basically any mech. And that's the thing we can do. I'm sorry, I gotta, I gotta drink something real quick. Way better. <sighs> so, second mission of the day. Let's see where this is going. And honestly, I think we should really go for a higher skull planet, really. It's uh, it's crazy. Currently, we are playing three, three and a half skull missions, and it's too easy. So, let's ramp up the difficulty a bit. Let's actually go for four skulls. Can we do that? I think three and a half is currently our comfort zone. I think that's definitely doable. We will see some heavier mags and heavier tanks there, but it's not yet a sold max. Or maybe we can skip the heavies, like the full heavy lands completely, and just go for a sold max directly with the items that we have, with the value that we have. We might be able to, because we have some very good equipment and targeting gear. Command interface initiated. So, battle number two. Let's see. We have a support lands on the board, and we will certainly drop like right here. Sure. Absolutely behind him. And I like it's pretty open terrain because that should give us a very nice Ready? and quick Ready. fight. Ready to rock, Chief. So fire starter. This planet is Whatever. As as my mouth. I want some apple juice. Warrior sling hussar. Question mark. Question mark. Yeah. Mouth. I want some apple juice. So here we are. We need somebody with night vision to actually engage first, because this is the one that provides the vision to the other guys. 
Uh, right now we have a very limited view distance because we are playing in night time, but night vision counters that completely. So, anybody here? Standing by. Yeah. So, the crow. The crow of storms. All in ass. I'm just gonna move in and uh, try to get as much damage in as possible. Firing on target. And that fire starter is not gonna live through the first round. Okay. Yeah. On it. Let's bring it. <laughs> I'm not gonna hit that, no. The problem is we don't see them. We have no visions, no sensor really, but um, we can actually target them. We know where they are because, you know, the information where the enemies are is shared by the crow. Although the others don't see them directly with their eyes. That means that we can start dropping mines, we can start shooting indirectly with the arrow, doing things like that. And of course, who's gonna be main target? Ready for orders. It is the Hetzer, if you didn't see it. Got it. Cool. Um, fire away. Very nice. Ooh, yeah, flat surface, a road. All of that means that we can get to our enemies quite quickly with our punch board as well. So that's also going to be really good. And we got five evasion out of that. So cool. Next up. Standing by. Hmm. So this crow has its own LBX. Its own, not LBX. It also has an LBX, but its own night vision. So that's really good. Let's keep shooting Mr... Mr. Starter, but I'm not gonna use all of my heat here. Because next round I will have a way better hit chance. Speaking of, that is always a good hit chance. Nothing critical yet. So far. Ah, that also means the road enables our carrier to move forward quicker. We will not shoot anything though. Nope, goodbye. Good to go. However. That hat, sir, On my way. wants to shoot to the back and wants to drop all the mines there. <laughs> Let's go. Yep. That's gonna hurt him. I'm out of SRM. I'm picking up a new sensor. That. Looks like enemy reinforcements. That was big. All right. Oh, God, I was sleeping. What do you want? That was pretty big, guys. I wonder what it was. Now, let's shoot directly. 16%. Yeah. Oh, he didn't like that. Not at all. <laughs> I broke him like my hip. Yeah, you did. So, next round. Give it to me, baby. Heads are being targeted. We should probably try to get away from the heads up because it's attracting so much fire right now. Right, turn 10. Oh, they have a lot of low initiative stuff here. So we have enemy units, we have reinforcements, and we have a support lance. So we're fighting three lances at the same time. Which means the salvage table is going to be so cluttered. Because there's so much stuff like single heat sinks, small lasers, stuff that we definitely don't want. So it's not a good quality uh, mission here, but it will give us money. And uh, we will probably be able to pick some good stuff that might um, might help the Urban Lord out in terms of ECM or something like that. Are they on the high ground there? There was something coming from the above when Darius announced the reinforcements. Pretty sure about that. Ah, there they are. Good. So they actually hit us. Haha. <laughs> Man, it's so many targets to destroy. This is an SRM carrier. Yeah, that guy has to go. A Vedette medium tank. And a Joust. Oh, Jousts have big guns. Yeah. Big guns and actually quite good armor. So, the fire starter. Probably gonna get destroyed by one of the crows. And we're gonna use our more long-range mechs to engage the stuff in the back. Especially that carrier here, because you see what it does. So, Lightmax running over mines. Beautiful. Haha, <laughs> but he has swarm ammo. Damage Got it. Minimal. Reporting minimal damage. Cool. Alrighty, so let's... Mm, yeah, bring the crow forward. Understood. The fire starter has taken its turn and it will probably get destroyed by somebody else later. Streaks ear medium tag. Warrior. 
How much damage do we need to do to the warrior? I think that's fine. So there's one down. Using a bit of LK and tandem in combination. Good to go. Uh, Uziel. I don't want to forgo the good hit chance of the Uziel, so it's going to make its shot count against something that I want to take out now. And I think it's going to be the stealth. And I think I'm not going to shoot all the pulses here. Actually, we can go controlled bursts. And that should lower the heat build up. Uh-huh. Blow up. No. Receiving you. Okay. Kronos. Kronos is gonna go in. And I mean, we have a hit chance. Let's go with everything except for the small laser. And the cool thing, or the, the interesting thing here, is that the stealth is still on its feet. I didn't expect that. Maybe we will take a little bit more damage than I anticipated here. So, I wanna, I wanna get the stealth out as my next target. By the way, the legs of the sling, horribly damaged. The Hussar is open. Commander. Huh. Gauss Rifle. 27% is pretty bad. Alright, let's move over here. Roger. We can oh. either shoot this for 42 or this for 21. This is not good. Alright, I'm gonna go with the 42. Hey, take it, man. Now he's um, unevasive anymore. Or again. And that means our light carrier can finish the fire starter while the rest is just pushing to the front line. The thing that I don't like is that the stealth actually has a turn, so I wasn't able to kill him in one go before he could act. Let's see what he's doing. With the streaks, he should probably hit us a bit. Oh, big hits. Alright. Losing armor. So another turn 17. Probably something like the Condor here. Maybe those guys on the high ground. I don't know. I mean, the dead has not done anything yet. The joust is still here. <clears throat> also the carrier. Oh god, these helicopter noises. I'm sorry. I heard that there's a mod that turns them off. It's a condor. They've got a lock on me. Sensor lock. That is not good, guys. The Uziel is actually... One of my squishy oh MX. I was sleeping. What do you want? So, what do I want? Let me see. Let me think. I think I want to move and then I want to shoot something with an arrow. Maybe I'm going to jump and do that. Or maybe we're going to sprint and do that. Yeah, I think sprinting is the right call. All right. Oh, I don't like going fast. It's scary. It's scary. Oh, okay. So... The Vedette is a 25%. I'm looking at the arrow here. The Prowler is 28. I'm gonna go with the 28 here. Fire! Him up, him down just like Woods. Nice damage. I like it. Prowlers, however, have a good chunk of armor, so... Yeah. And I think it is a binary or hyper laser, which is uh, fired up there from the Joust. It's, uh, it's a thing that we have to take care of at some point. Don't know how yet. Got something you want done? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do that. Let's move. I'm gonna use him as the killer for the fire starter. Copy that. I said killer. Come on. Fall damage to the center. That's what we need now. It's 10. Yeah, we got it. Nice. So he actually killed him. And that means our SRM carrier can go for the stealth that has a lot of armor damage already. So we have a good shank or good chance to actually crit him with the amount of firepower, with the volume of fire that we bring in. Stand it's in perfect. Back. It's just perfect, guys. So the others are coming close. Um, what do I drop where? It's probably last turn of the Prowler. Unless I do something like this. Alright, let's try. Let's try to sprint away from this. And we're going to shoot the Thunderbolt and everything, basically. And since it was the projected last turn, I should have gone with Warlord to amp my hit chance a little bit. A hover tank? Sure. Man, we see so many tanks and just vehicles in general lately. It's kind of crazy. 
So, battle plan still stands. Skyros is moving forward. Shoots dead fire. Oh, come on, really? That was so bad. So I guess they have another turn. Maybe. We'll see about that. Sestras only has an LRM-10, so it's good to know. We don't have to care about him so much. The Prowler, again, has a good chunk of armor, so we have to grind through that. Wield propulsion is crit. My mech's coming uh, but it's around. still holding. So, turn 26. Probably one of those guys here. Yeah, the Hussar. The funny thing is, as soon as he's moving... Um, he is going to stop his movement directly because uh, when you're running over mines and you take leg damage from the mines, internal structural leg damage, then you instantly stop the movement because it hurts so much. It's like stepping on Legos. You wouldn't continue when you stepped on Legos. Wait, what? Really? Maybe that's not the case anymore. Maybe that was old information. But Max on fire. He ran over a lot of mines. And he actually got me with the large laser. Damn it. Well, it's cool that he's close so that we can... Maybe finish him now. Good. I cannot sprint for three evasion. I, I could, but then I'd be in a very awkward position. So we're gonna move for two, because that's the most that we can get. And, uh, yeah. Coordinates received. We will definitely not shoot the large laser, but all of the other things. Get him! It is baffling that he is still alive. A critical hit. Yeah, we got a crit on the mask. We also hit our own mech with a bit of acid. It's not too bad. Oh, I think only two hits there. It's worth it. So, what are we doing now? The light carrier has higher initiative than the stealth. And the stealth now is unsteady, which means... Skyros should be able to kill him. Still alive. Internal structure damage. Yes, Commander. Ah, all right. Let's go! I wanna shoot the tank. Yep, and that's what we do. And we're gonna not shoot all of the lasers. And I think we're gonna go for a cluster shot. Engaging with target. For reliability. He's panicked, nice. Orders. Stormcrow. Do your Stormcrow things, come on. We have tandem ammo still. At the same time, the tank is almost down. Is it still worth it? It chances, um, okay. I need to take the, the, the max out of my flanks, though. Out of my flank, only singular. Oh, uh, fine. Let's go for it. And we have 24% here and 33 there, so we're gonna take the sling. I think also it's kind of the more dangerous target. 24 to 33. I think it's LK. Cool. Scored a critical hit. Ah, God, I was sleeping. Ready for orders. I mean, the thing that we can do with the punch pod is actual punches. Let's go. Acknowledged. Let's go. Yeah. It's a good target. We get two evasion as well as uh, the guarded state out of that. Scored a critical hit. Get him! There we go. Finally. <laughs> and we should have bulwark. Do we? Tango down. Oh yeah, we do. Okay, cool. Oh, God, I was sleeping. What do you want? What do you want? All that she wants is another baby. You're asking a lot of an old guy. I'm gonna press all the buttons and you can stop me. So next big target I is the cluster of tanks up here. on the high grounds. I think the right side here has been been covered by our storm crow alone already. And we gotta take care of those big lasers that are coming. What else do we have this round? Three more mechs and or vehicles. So it's a light carrier. It's the... <laughs> the, uh, what's it called? Yellow jacket. And I think it's still our Hetza, right? Yeah, so just tanks at this point. The question is, what is Skyros gonna do? Maybe he can actually finish the Prowler. Maybe he can uh, also follow up on the Sling. Let's check it out. Maybe we have both options. Sure. Copy that. So, we're gonna go with highest hit chance here. That's 16%. That's way better. And we can amplify it even more with standard ammo. Sure, let's take it. Affirmative. Mech Warrior. 
Show them what and we are also inspired. Nice. Ooh, Hetzer, what are you doing here? So hit chance is pretty bad. Jaws is pretty bad. Everything is pretty bad. Maybe we can actually get the carrier if we're getting lucky, but I want a, I want a torso twist here. I want a tank twist. Maybe like that. So, here we go. Gonna use Warlord, and we're gonna try to hit the carrier with anything, basically. No, we didn't get anything. <laughs> yeah, but an 11% hit chance, it was quite a long shot. It could have worked, though. It's a PPC on an SRM4. Got it. The Joust. I think those are machine guns. Again, hyper laser and an SRM4 or something? Don't know. And the twist actually helps us because now the left side is somewhat shielded from the right side. Um, but those guys still engage from the front, so it's not gonna be that good. Anyway, sprint on the high ground for four evasion. Now look at that. Finally, we get something like a hit chance. 35, something, 50 something. I'll take the 50. Yep, 60 damage, gonna do it eventually. Okay, so. Right, we got an AMS Mark II, right? It's kind of weird when I'm switching between my YouTube and my Twitch playthroughs. And uh, by the way, those are different. They are separate from one another so that you guys can watch this YouTube playthrough in one go with a big playlist if you want to. And you don't have to worry about missing anything. Um, but in my Twitch playthrough, I I also have an AMS Mark II but on a different Mac. And I'm, I'm always forgetting which one has which. Oh, that's the carrier. Yeah, we gotta take that thing soon. All right, but I'm hopeful that the yellow jacket attracts some fire from the jowls so that uh, the mechs are still in good condition when we are coming out of this fight. How do we break this? It's a pretty big bulwark with tanks up there. So currently we are so busy destroying those guys down here that we don't really have the chance to push up the hill and it's needed. It's really needed in order to get there, in order to get a decent hit chance and destroy those things. So, 24. It is the Hussar. Hussar! Come on, man. Do your thing. Or better, not do it. Because that large laser actually hurts. We have two evasion here, three there, two, only one here on the Stalker. Oh, and he's fast! Oh, look at that! He's actually back striking. Ah, no, ne never mind. He is not striking at all. Alright, so, that means. Oh, we can push forward. And we should probably think about dropping some LK and tandem ammo. This is all tandem. I want to get this guy off the battlefield now. Huh. And we didn't get him. We are very close. Oh no. Ah, wait, yeah, he turned around, of course. That's what he did. Never mind. So, high accuracy target against a guy that is super evasive. An ER large. We don't need much to knock him down. I think I'll do it. I'm exposing my back towards the high ground, I know. But I think it's still the right call. Yeah, we made him unsteady. So one follow up shot and he's down. Um, the Kronos will push. Push, 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 push. That's what we do. 35%. I'll take it. God, I it's something. What do you want? Ha! Huh. And here is the thing. Where's the carrier? It's back in the in the in the depth of field. Damn it. Damn it. So. Oh, I don't like going fast. It's scary. I'm gonna press all the buttons and you can't stop me. I guess we're just gonna panic those guys out. We're gonna drop some arrows, soften them up. I was hoping that the uh, the prowler would have gotten more damage there. The Sastros is very damaged. Everybody's very damaged, really. Uh, sure. Let's go up here. Moving fast. Uh, shoot him. And we killed him. So the this, this Stormcrow here with the LBX is the actual killer. And I wonder if the fall damage kill from the Firestarter did count as a kill for the Crow earlier. 
I don't know. I wonder if it was a good idea to kind of deny the kills for the Kronos because it's uh, still in the process of running uh, and trying to get into any good position there, you know, and then the large, uh, the long range guys are coming in and saying, nope, that's my target now. You don't get anything. Goodbye. Affirmative. So, Joust, you have a lot of front armor. We can get in his in his back. It would be pretty good. Oh, come on! <laughs> I was trying to hit the carrier. Front would have maybe a kill. Side would have definitely been a kill. All right. Thirty-one percent, twenty-nine percent, forty-four percent on the Cestrus, but the Cestrus is irrelevant. So. Oh, we're gonna go with that. Why do we have such a bad hit chance? Let me see. Weapon accuracy, moved self, target moved. Okay, so we're gonna try to shave some evasion off of this guy with the sensor lock. Because I want him down now. Uh, that's not the one. That's alright. Almost got him. Alright. Order Let's see. We actually got a tank down. Holy crap, it took forever, but okay. Reporting. We are getting there, guys. Now, turn 14 is gonna be interesting because the Joust is uh, right in front of my helicopter. Oh, never mind. That was scary, Mr. Vedette. So, helicopter down, and the Joust is now free to do whatever it wants to do. Okay. Alright. Fair enough. Just shoot your stuff. I'm I'm okay with that. <clears throat> I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> so far so good. Oh, that's a carrier. Carrier versus carrier violence. My armor's getting stripped off. All right. I really hope that we can keep our light carrier for one more round. Because it's in a very good spot to contest those dudes down there. Mmm, sensor impaired. Not good. These high ground tanks are actually giving me a, a hard time. As predicted. But I can not contest them, really. The, the carrier can go. Yeah, sure. With some splash weapons from swarm missiles, maybe. Yeah. We really gotta get it done. And the arrow. And I think that's the next thing that I'm gonna do. Just drop an arrow on their heads and some swarm missiles and then the carrier should be no more. Uh, just hold it, man. I just need you for one, one more round. Ready for order. Nice. My turn. Mm hmm So we will sprint forward. Roger that. God, Both the heat feet. on the crow is just massive. So we have 10 tandem ammos left. I still think I'm gonna fire all of them. Rest is LK. That's okay. I'm out of SRM. Good to go. LBX Stormcrow. I mean, wait, can you do it? You certainly can, absolutely. Acknowledged. Thanks to the night vision, we actually have a hit chance here. And yet again, we don't need much. Yikes. Commander. Okay. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Uh, sprint a bit. Understood. Moving Shoot fast. a bit. Don't overheat, please. A copy. Oh god, I was sleeping. It's not enough. What do you want? So we can only shoot indirectly against the carrier. I guess that's it what we do then. Um I want to move and shoot. Yeah. And yet again, it's going to be an indir indirect shot here. Uh, we have six shots left, fine, and this is gonna be swarms. Him up, him down, just like we got him. Dead fire ammo explosion. I think that was an important shot. That's an awfully nice Buick you have. Pity if anything should happen to it. So, Condor is gonna be the next one in line. Oh no. That was a headshot. Oh. <laughs> Alright. Those guys mean it. They mean business. Stupid joust, go away. Standing by. Alright, Uziel, Uziel, Uziel. We, we need you, buddy. 
come on, do something. I cannot really do anything right now, except for maybe he killing this. Firing on target. Nice. It's not enough. No. I really wish that Skyros would survive this. He can definitely kill one of the tanks right in front of us. But he's turn 16. This one is turn 8, so the Condor could technically kill our lot carrier, especially with the weapons he has. The machine guns alone might be enough. The LRM-15. All he needs is a bit of splash against the front of our mech tank. Tank mech. Mech tank. Um, he might get the Chronos. He might try to go for the Stormcrow. But I don't think so. And then we still have the heads up. The tank is still tanking. Beautiful. Good. That is what we needed. Um, that means also that we will move directly over here. We're gonna shoot... Dead fire. We have enough missiles still. Yep. So, another one down. Slowly but surely, guys. We will get it done. Maybe I should have turned around, showing the back. Yeah. So, 13%. I'm not gonna move this thing anymore. Fine, 5 damage. And that's our last Thunderbolt. And I would say our Hetza has done its duty. 100%. So, it's fine if it's getting destroyed now. I don't care about it anymore. That's weird. Wait, we were here. So, Sestra's hover tank. Still going for it, and this right side is holding. Ah, oh, guys, get yourself a headser. I don't know what the what the AI thinks about the headser here, but just get yourself one and have fun with it. Hmm. 19% high explosive, 19% slug. We need that slug shot. Target acquired. If it hits or not, we need to break him open before we do anything Damn else it. right now. Waiting for orders. Uh, okay. Let's go in with the crow. Damage is damage, and I think Skyros... Yeah, Skyros is 100% able to do it. Okay, guys, we're gonna now enable our sprint. This this is it. <laughs> this is how we do it. We just have to sprint up on the high ground. There is no way around it, really. So as soon as the Kronos is up there, we will win this game, 100%. But in the meantime, we can try to do something against those guys from far, far away. And we do. Ah, oh, God, I was sleeping. What do you want? You're asking a lot of I like the direct line of sight. Lining them up, knocking them down, just like yes! Let's get some damage in here. Shouldn't have gone for Swarm, I think. Maybe a regular shot was better. Huh. And I don't like the head the situation of the Stormcrow here. Not at all. It's kind of interesting. The AI is actually going up to the hill here. They're actually doing smart things. They are utilizing their long range more than anything else. Okay, heads up. 5, 5, 11, 20! With a Warlord ability. Huh, maybe? Yeah. No, not quite. Man, I really wonder what we can get out of this. I hope it was worth it. It's a quite long mission here. So just a quick secondary battle, as always. Alright, we're gonna go for the side attack. We're gonna go for standard ammo. And... Oh, it's the wrong side. Of course. It doesn't matter, though. Good job, Skyros. Enemy vehicle destroyed. <sighs> so, three more tanks. And then we can go home. I wonder what's gonna happen. The good news is, we have the arrows. We have Hydra missiles. We can set everything on fire up there. If we want to. Is that a hit chance? It is not. So we're gonna... Actually, I'm gonna bring him to safety. This is not feeling comfortable anymore. Mm, maybe we can shoot them, so we're gonna reserve this guy. Same thing here. Yeah, they have just gone to cover completely, so we have to wait for them to make a move. Something. Come on, guys. Move it. Get into line of sight again. You want to. I know it. 
Okay. We might be able to fire at him. Ready. I mean, this guy can always do it. Moving uh, sideways. Very important. 9% uh, or 0.9%. I think my best bet would be um, trying to just light everything on fire there. There's no way around it. Confirmed. Mark 2 overload. Sure. Ah, oh God, I was sleeping. What do you want? Okay, so we have direct line of sight. And we actually have a pretty good hit chance here. So, Hydras. Or standard ammo. I think I'm gonna drop one Hydra and one standard ammo. Because the Hydra will ignite the forest anyway. And that's what I was going for. I broke him like my orders. Yes. This is gonna go quite well soon. Here we go, guys. Um, I think we're gonna even use Vigilance. Let's do that. Commander. Skyros might get Under downed shoot. here because of his front armor. Yeah. No. Oh bad. Oh bad. This crow is getting pounded. Ready for orders. Move order received. Give me something, come on. Attacking from position. And that is something. It's not great, but it's something. Ready for orders. And uh yes, this guy is up on the high ground now. Hmm. Now where do we go? I think it is a good idea to attack this specific tank from the front here. All right, let's go. And we could also think about going for the Joust's back. Or for this guy's back with 75. Two mag shots and L. Mm, that's the Bombast laser on the Vedette. Interesting. This would be a kill chance. I will take it. Receiving you. Yeah, certainly is now. Got it. And killed it. Maybe I should have gone Vigilant. Just to absorb a bit more damage. I think that could have been a good idea. And we're gonna move and brace. Oh God, I was sleeping. What do you want? So nowhere to get direct line of sight anymore. If we jump, we also don't get anything. So we will just stand and shoot. We're gonna try to go for the Bedette. With a with an indirect shot with standard ammo, fire, bam! Yeah, it's actually quite good damage. Skyros is pushing. Sure, this little guy. I don't know if he's gonna get up the hill. Who knows? Stand and shoot here. Five percent, nine percent. I'll take the nine. Dealing no damage. I mean, what we need technically is like two turns for the punch bot to do the punch things. Got it. Nice. Next. Joust. Nothing. Beautiful. The five evasion here kept us safe. And we need to take the vedette down as much as possible, as quickly as possible. Yeah. What do you need? Okay. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, can we can we somehow no we cannot so we're gonna move and shoot Copy that. moving for one fire Copy that. beautiful Orders. Um, same thing here you know what we're gonna go with controlled burst is a bit of a better cooling better clustering oh the streak didn't even fire hmm crazy so and then we're gonna move to cover because we have the agility here commander Can we kill this? I think we can. I think we could. Position confirmed. I know that we could have shot the Vedette as well, but I think this is just so valuable. Let's go. And we got him. Pilot ejected. Holy crap. Are we gonna make it, guys? I think I'm gonna go all in here. And we're gonna attack the right side with the punch. I think this is gonna be it. To hit the left side, yeah. My left right coordination is so bad. <laughs> no, you know what? The, ooh, the biggest problem I'm having, my problem with this is that uh, the mechs and the and the tank silhouettes are inverted. 
The left on a mech is uh, not the left on a tank. And vice versa. Please kill. Firing. Fail to connect. Ah, God, I was sleeping. When that was want. not a kill. Okay. So, I'm not gonna shoot the arrow, I'm gonna shoot swarm missiles. It is not enough. Uh oh. Uh oh. Orders. Uh oh. So there's one more chance. There's one chance. We gotta move and shoot. Location confirmed. And we need the damage. Alright, buddy. Alright, alright, alright. So let's go sensor lock this guy. I don't know if it helps anything. I mean, he has negative evasion now. Let's do it. Everything is awesome! <laughs> Made it. Mission successful. So yeah, I took the risk. It was basically a derp in the end. Just that. Uh, but it worked out in the end. And I think we didn't really lose that much. Sure, the one headshot, that was crazy. Also, the Stormcrow got a bit of repairs to do. Center Torso was hit, I think, once or twice. Um, but in general, we were coming out of this quite alive. And there's a binary or hyperlaser on the board. That's interesting. I'm really thinking about taking it and trying to also put it into my urban lord. Just making it a pinpoint machine. Dropping the 5, the ultra 5 that we have there. But anyway, there is a Condor. It's not a bad tank. Also not a good one. So a bunch of hover tanks here. Sure. Not bad, not bad, not bad. So let's see what else we got. A clan AMS. Uh, sorry, not AMS, ATM. We have an ER large laser clan. It's not too bad. I'm really thinking about it. Wait, the binary laser was damaged? Broken? Oh, bombast laser. <sighs> yeah, I mean, they have fire modes. We can shoot higher damage and better range, right? I like the idea, but it's seven tons. It's quite heavy. Hmm. Let's see what else we got, okay? We have a bunch of machine guns, a bunch of SRMs, oh yeah, a bunch of tags, also a bunch of battle computers. Now that's interesting. Come sweet, Endo Steel. Oh, you know what, guys? I will definitely take that because it's a very valuable item. I am thinking that we should certainly, probably, most likely put all the battle computers from the Uziel on the Stalker and just make it a crazy, crazily accurate arrow carrier. Because the Uziel can always just push in and kill. I like that idea. I really do. The Guardian ECM is okay. It's good to have. A light active probe. Yeah, no. Masks, sensors, whatever. Soup, 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 supercharger. Alrighty, boys. <laughs> that is a thing. Um, sure, that changes my plan here. That changes my pick plan. Damn it. There is one double heatsink. How many double heatsinks do we have? Two. Okay, we could take one. We could. I also want the bombast laser. I think I will. Let me think about it real quick. So those are really good. But I think the Bombast Laser gives us some, some options for building some things. Alright, so Bombast Laser, Clan XL Engine, Supercharger. Let's do it, guys. Let's see what else we get from the battlefield. We get a Condor part. It's a cavalry tank. We have the Hussar, which is... Eh. Prowler. Prowler is okay. Um, Stealth, Stealth, Vedette. Oh, the Vedette is also quite good. Shoot sell for a good chunk of money. We have case, we have a basic cockpit for the maximum value. We have endo steel we don't care about. We have the clan XL engine we don't really care about. Because we have one lying around, so we'll sell it. We have the standard fire control system and then a bit of ammo. Okay, whatever. So overall, it was worth it. We got some very interesting combo pieces for our builds. The supercharger is gonna be a game changer for the melee mech. Honestly, this is gonna be so good. And um, on top of it, uh, the bombast laser, plus some money, plus some items, plus some tank parts. We are fine, guys. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, don't forget to leave a rating, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I hope to see you guys next time. Goodbye.